Hello and welcome to The Lion Show. It's your host, your favorite business coach, Robert Lyon. Today, we have the great privilege of talking to Greg Patapenko. And he's an awesome man. He's having an interesting day in Toronto. There's a power outage. So if you hear like beeping in the background, that's kind of what that is. But he was he's brave enough to still come on the show and drop some wisdom on us. So Greg, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and tell everybody just like a little bit about you and uh, what you got going on? Yeah. Thanks Rob. So uh, thanks for having me on the show. And uh, my name is uh, Greg Parpenko. I'm from Toronto, Canada. And um, I'll give you a bit of a backstory of how I came to Canada many, many years ago as, a, as an immigrant. I was uh, born in the Soviet Union and uh, came here in 97. Didn't have a lot of friends, but uh, thankfully we were able to afford a computer. And uh, I taught myself, you know, how to make web pages and eventually, uh, you know, built a site that like went viral at the time before the word, the, the word viral was born. Um, I couldn't really monetize it, but I made it, made some money with display banners. So it was like the early days of display advertising. Um, you know, I made quite a lot of money for a teenager, but then uh, that tactic stopped working. So I went through the traditional route. So, you know, I joined the military, the, uh, the Canadian army, got a degree in finance, uh, worked here uh, in finance and then like gold mining, actually. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. and around 2007, yeah, I, uh, you know, I started looking into additional uh, streams of income because, you know, even though I was working for the biggest gold mining company in the world, you know, it was still not enough um, to support my lifestyle and, you know, I'm about to start a family. And I remembered my skills in website building and I found a community online that, you know, much like you're doing with your podcast, they were trying to educate folks but it was a forum right it was before podcast it was before youtube it was none of that social media stuff so i, I learned uh, how to advertise uh, on google uh, search at the time it was called adwords and you know putting two together essentially what i created was a lead generation funnel and i started generating leads as an affiliate for um, financial institutions so like loans mortgages and of course oh, cool. 2007 was the best year to do that why because 2008 was the financial crisis so yeah. <laughs> the whole thing tumbled but it didn't die and like slowly but surely i made it work uh, step by step so like you know first year i made like 13k on the side mm -hmm. next year i made like 50k on the side and eventually you know after um i started making my entire annual salary in like a month or two i figured all right i can do this so at 21 i went full-time and since then i've uh, basically uh, run my uh, performance agency and um five years ago we added the e-commerce to the mix so we're focusing on mostly lead generation and uh, e-commerce at the top. So that's nice. that's the uh, intro. How's that? That's awesome, man. So, wait, you said a couple of things when when you were making the fifty thousand on the side or whatever. Was that were, were you an affiliate of financial agencies or were you doing lead generation and, and Google Ads for like financial industries and things like that? So I was doing lead generation as an affiliate, which, you know, for cool. those listeners who may or may not know the difference is they didn't hire me to manage their ad accounts for them. And they were just buying leads from me essentially. So what I was doing, I was generating oh, uh, leads on my websites that I've built and uh, selling them to these uh, you know, loan bro brokers or you know, underwriters, what have you. Uh, and then of course I branched out into other industries like over the years. How, how old were you when you left uh, the Soviet union? Uh, I just turned 16 and, uh, celebrated my birthday and next uh, day we left yeah in toronto is that where you went right away or yeah i pretty much spent most of my time here i mean when i worked for for the mining company i spent a lot of time in you know north and south america I picked up uh, some espanol but that was uh, that was fun it was a lot of travel like it wasn't a bad job like it, it just wasn't uh yeah you know i wasn't living up to my full potential i guess so that's why I, eventually i chose a different path when you were working for the gold companies were you like one of the guys in the suits or did you ever go in the mines or anything like that both like i mean i oh. was the corporate corporate office prick that was coming to all the mine sites you know trying to help them yeah uh, oftentimes they didn't really want the corporate help but yeah like uh, you know when i was in the head office it was suit and tie and then when i was in the mines it's an old hard hat and uh, yeah. safety shoes and everything but mines those are, are creepy man <laughs> the, the the difference is those are no underground mines like that company was uh, open pit so it was just these oh, wow. giant like craters like you know kilometers yeah. wide with like those humongous Think trucks bobcats you know, like, and just like pulling all the gold and oh yeah through. like yeah <laughs> i mean it's basically they're pulling a lot of rock and that has to be then leashed with cyanide and uh it would be um you know, like that giant mining truck, like picture 100 tons, that would contain enough gold to make a couple of uh, wedding rings. That's about it. Yeah. That's why it's so expensive. <laughs> That's wild. Um, so let me know a little bit about what your agency's got going on right now. What does it look like? How is the industry kind of in your mind looking and just like, what are you kind of getting into? Yeah. So again, it kind of morphed over the years, like you probably uh, 
sense that, you know, kind of went into different directions at a time, like mobile app marketing, software marketing, lead generation, e-commerce. But uh, yeah, so uh, currently we are focusing on Google ad services and email marketing services for uh, lead generation and e-commerce clients uh, and cool. some of our own projects as well. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, industries, like we did a lot of work in the tactical industry. So, you know, working with, you know, like uh, gun care products and, um, you know, performance enhancements, uh, things of that nature. Um, you know, and experimenting with other industries like CBD and uh, general consumer electronics. Yeah. CBD is a pain in the ass to market for Google ads. Do you guys have, do you have to do like the, where you call it something else, where you call it like hemp, you run ads to the hemp website and then you have to fucking collect their info. I mean, yeah, you, you have to navigate, you have to navigate the, the policies in an intelligent manner, but essentially, yeah, like uh, there's, there's certain ways of uh, doing it compliantly and legally. So yeah. we're trying to, uh, to observe that, to I think it's kind create of the best user experience, you know? So out of, all, out of all the experiences like it's, that you've had, it's interesting that you've kind of come back down to Google ads and email. It's interesting that you said that. So now you're, you run Google ads, obviously you probably capture lead generation and then you also help businesses, you know, capture and monetize as much as they can on the email side. Is that kind of the, the plan that you're doing right now? Well, so email is uh, kind of like a subset of the overall services. Like, you know, with Google yeah. advertising, I'm comfortable doing it for a wide variety of uh, businesses, but with Email, we specialize on e-commerce. Right. We are a Clavio partner. Clavio is basically an e-commerce centric Shopify plugin for the lake of uh, Battle World, but it's, it's in my opinion, the best one. Mm -hmm. And it's tailored to Shopify and uh, e-commerce in particular. I mean, a lot of those frameworks do apply to like any business. Obviously, right. you know, like, nurture your, <laughs> your subscribers, like don't burn the list, you know, et cetera. Um, but you know, there's certain uh, e-com specific things like, you know, card abandonment, recovery, browse abandonment, um, purchase welcome sequence and whatnot so those are you know more more tuned to e-com business as well yeah, yeah. uh owning first party data is what everyone seems to uh, believe that that's the way forward when the cook cookies are going away and uh, tracking is uh, becoming less accurate um, and targeting as well yeah it is kind of a pain in the ass how, how are you seeing the e-commerce market right now? I'm seeing less buying, um, running ads are a little more expensive, you know, like, mm -hmm. but what are you, what are you seeing since you're in the pits too? Is it? Yeah. Cost? So ads, ads are more expensive. People are uh, quietly struggling like this. A lot of conversations that uh, happen in private rooms, like whenever I'm talking to other marketers in private, they're like, man, you know, it's, I'm hurting. Yeah, um, we, <laughs> okay, good. We, I'm we not are, the only yeah, one, man. <laughs> yeah, we we heard and got to. Sh uh, I pretty much turned off all of my Facebook advertising. Yeah, uh, a few months ago. Um, I think the general consumer is trying to save money, so there's less like uh, impulse like, spending and more strategic spending, if you will, and things mm -hmm. that will help them save money, help you know, like or the things that they really need. So no longer people are just throwing money at the first ad they see, and uh, you really need to have a good offer and. You have to be a good marketer. <laughs> That's the truth right now. You yeah. got to know what the fuck you're doing. It's kind of nice in a way because a lot of marketers who all sucked and didn't know what they were doing are going to, they're going to struggle. But if you can actually make people money in this time and you can actually, you know, do the things that you need to do, there is a big opportunity. I feel like to be the rainmaker because everybody's struggling right now. I don't think it's uh there's, there's just less money just being thrown around. Like less people are just frivolously buying stuff mm -hmm. or and things. And then also I think people are just tired of, the same old marketing stuff. I think people are, are, are just getting kind of, they've, they've had enough of, you know, they click a button and then they get upsell, 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 or they get on a phone call and somebody has to call them eight times today before they hang up, you know? So it's like, it's a, it's an interesting shift in the marketplace, which is kind of scary. You know, it's not going to be as easy as it was, which sucks because everybody likes making money. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you actually know what you're doing and you can navigate the waters, I think it's going to be okay. Um, yeah, I shut down most of my Facebook uh, ads and I've put it towards TikTok and TikTok is still doing pretty good. I don't know if you've ever dabbled in that, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I hear that it's uh, doing well for a lot of people. We just haven't had the, the time or resources to tap into it. And yeah. um, really, it mostly comes down to the creative uh, resources because you, know, you, you can learn how to you know, push buttons and, and add posts from fairly quickly. It's right. um, having uh, more of that creative uh, capacity of pumping out that video content at a higher rate mm -hmm. uh, and you know, good quality. Like that's, that's a challenge that um, is not easy. Yeah. And so now you're just focused more on e-com. Do you have any like cool 
uh, e-com businesses that you've, you've been able to really get some badass results for? The latest one is the, the CBD stuff. That's like really uh, c- kind yeah. of cutting edge. And there's definitely issues with policy. But once you kind of sort those out, like it's amazing how, how welcome it is in, uh, in the end consumer. Right. Um, and then, you know, cool stuff. Like we had a Canadian body armor manufacturer that's currently oh, sold out. Body armor? That's pretty oh, yeah, they're sitting with like no, no, no plates available to sell. So and we kind of <laughs> created Sold a problem for them. Huh? Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, we have, because of you, we have to buy a new machinery. You're like, okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, those are just a couple of recent examples. Some of our own internal projects, like a couple of years ago, we hit it off with one product in the gun care space that uh, got picked up by, you know, like Guns and Ammo magazine, Recoil magazine. Yeah. Um, we went to exhibit at SHOT Show. So talk about going from like strictly digital into like the offline actually running a booth at a trade show and uh, meeting people uh, face-to-face and uh, demonstrating like that's a completely new level it was fun yeah it's interesting like when you when you know when you just sell online you kind of forget like oh man if i just go out to like gun shows and i just show them the actual product they're gonna we're gonna sell the shit out of this but everybody just wants to it's like you gotta split your mind back between reality like if you just had a shop and you were able to run Google ads to get people into the shop, you're going to sell a shitload more guns than just sometimes. But then the, the internet allows you to sell everywhere mm-hmm. all over the world. I don't know. You just kind of, you got to step back into some of the older roots where you go to gun shows, you talk to people, you actually interact with your audience and you're going to learn things though. That's going to help your marketing for online as well. It's kind of, yeah, well, funny. you got to listen to a customer all the time. The problem is on the internet, people act very differently. Just, uh, right. you probably can't imagine the amount of comments we had on our ads. Like, oh, this is a scam. Fuck you guys. And this and that. And then like, uh, when it's in person, like no, nobody says that. Like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, I had a client that told me recently, he's like, well, I went to a trade show and I would sell, you know, one out of every, you know, 40 person who would come by and then we'd run ads and 500 people would go to my site and no one would buy. It just doesn't make sense. I was like, well, it's because it's the internet. People just look at shit on the internet and then they leave. Like there's a way big difference than trade show numbers and actual online running ads and and numbers and things like that. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, so I'd like to drop some value maybe for the audience. I mean, if you were to say, let's just say someone was starting from zero do you think the way to riches is e-com still and or do you think it would be running an agency uh, and being of a, a service? What do you think if you had to choose? A- I mean, way to go after we just finished talking about how hard and difficult it is. And you got to know what you're doing. And now we're yeah. know, trying to address the poor newbies. But uh, you know what? Like, I think, um, honestly, anything you do will be hard. Uh, yeah. So it's not like, oh, one is easier than the other. And I can attest to it because you're in the rooms with like affiliates and like oh man like affiliate marketing sucks like uh, those e-com guys have it so easy and then e-com guys are like oh man e-com sucks like those amazon guys they're crushing it and the amazon guys, i hate the it NFT like guys. i wish i was on shopify <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, yeah. It's, so like, <laughs> not, it's just hard out right so just pick like whatever you think you can sell in like based on your strengths or like interests or passions and the not just yours, but like the type of audience you want to serve. Like, because I have, I have to almost relearn that because uh, as a you know, paid ads person, we used to be able to just throw up a bunch of ads and right. achieve right. results. <laughs> and uh, in the current environment, like you, you can't do it. So yeah. I have to really care about the customer you're serving and really know them well. And that's how you win. So like whatever you end up starting, uh, if you are just starting out, like make sure you think hard about not only your own why, but also like your who, right? And then you know, when you figure out the who and the why, I think that's how you will find a better way of how to serve that who, whether it's through a service-based agency, selling a physical product, selling a digital product, mm. or maybe starting like a startup, like a SaaS or something. You know? How have you found products to sell on e- online that, that are good? Do you have like a, a secret for that? Or is it just you find good clients that have already have big factories and stuff like that and things like that? As an e-com merchant or as an agency? Because um, mm, kind of, they're well, slightly I, different. They're very different. I, I just used to do yeah. drop shipping back in the day, right? So that's how I got my e-com thing. And then I actually have my own business where I make uh, furniture and I sell it online a lot. So I know that e-com mm-hmm. as well. It's just horrible. It's so hard to be the, the production, the packing, the shipping, and the e-com and the internet. You know, it's 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 a it's a struggle. Absolutely. So I would love to find if I would just wanted to see if you had any ideas on maybe how to find a good product to sell or 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 like it just just your thinking about like I don't know finding products and selling. I mean, I'm probably the worst person to ask because we've tested like hundreds of products in the yeah. drop shipping days and, and uh, the success rate was very very low. Yeah. Um. You know, we had 
two products that broke uh, the seven figure uh, in sales mark and you know maybe half a dozen products that did like the five six figures mark and the rest were does so I, I can't say that i cracked the formula down but essentially like you know you gotta sell what people uh, love to buy mm. same thing like if you look for a client like you know taking on a client with an unproven product is a gamble whereas like you know somebody comes to you and says you know we have sold two million dollars worth of this stuff with no marketing uh, that's a good sign yeah, you know you, you've got you got something like you can pour gasoline on that fire yeah with you know paid, paid media and stuff like that i've been thinking about um there's this website uh, i can't remember it's it's something trending products or something like that but you can find what products are just going absolutely mm-hmm. nuts and then just tap into it that's it's just it's just too much work though I'm, I'm not gonna do it but i think it's a cool way to think about it it's like if you find a product that's already trending and then you just basically make a real quick Shopify account and you start running ads to it. Hopefully it'll sell and you can drop ship it. But the problem you is can, the you can do so it. Yeah. The margin. The other thing, and again, uh, I haven't accomplished this myself, but essentially what I'm learning is that a lot of uh, people are saying that you shouldn't even start with the product, you start with an audience. And then it goes back to our, you know, why. Oh, cool. Because if you build an audience, like think about, you know, Jocko Willink, right? Yeah. He has an audience that will buy anything he will sell so like i bought all of his books now he's got supplements he's got energy drinks people are buying that he's got right. a uh, hunting uh, apparel brand that people are you know flying off the shelf he's got like uh, combat boots like uh, the jujitsu g like he's got jeans like everything he puts <laughs> his name on he's got such a strong personal brand and such a little audience that they will buy anything so ultimately like if you can be a little bit like jocko yeah, uh, in that sense, then you can, not you don't care which freaking product you sell. You just they just eat it up, right? So that's right. A, a different way of doing it, right? So um, again, I, I can't say that I've excelled at it. Just coming from that like paid ads background, where like uh, I can just buy my audience. Well, that's not working as good lately because the prices are up and people are smarter. Like they they know it's an ad. They know it's it's not like a content piece. Yeah, kind of influence marketing is big. So maybe you should be using ads to grow your audience and then selling products more organically or something like that. There's, there's so many different ways to do it. I think everything is just comes down to, you got to have the funnel set up before you run ads. You got to have, you got to have a, a crushing funnel. You got to have, have great copywriting, great product, mm-hmm. know your audience, and then find a way to sell it organically. And then when you're making money organically, you take the money from the, what you're doing organically. And then you run that with ads. Like you take a chunk of your organic profits and run ads is kind of what I see as a little bit of the future. What do you think? I mean, yes and no. Like I've I've seen uh, some clients. So like I had a client that basically invented a type of toy that he sold uh, through a single Facebook ad with a selfie video that he shot on his iPhone with one video <laughs> through a yeah. funnel that looked like uh, something uh, worse than uh, websites I was building in 1998. Mm-hmm. Honestly, uh, there was a somewhat of a funnel in terms of like there were upsells and downsells, but it literally looked like it was well, made in the ugly, time. the ugly web pages sell like, right? and the guy, <laughs> the guy sold half a million dollars worth. And why? Because he had a good product for a starving audience, like people who were locked, uh, locked Ooh. up at, in their homes with kids. And they're like, okay, I need some new stuff for kids to play with. Yeah. And there he was. So basically that's kind of getting a couple of things, right? Like a good product good with yeah. good timing for the right audience and the rest is uh, i mean obviously would he have better results if he had like a lot more content videos professional funnel yes he would yeah. uh but you know he still got away with half a million dollars at the time when people were talking right so um there's, there's a there magic go. in there i think there's some magic in, in something where it's just like i got the perfect product i got the perfect audience or a hungry audience like you said the old marketing ways there's a guy selling hot dogs or whatever. And he's like, what do you, what do you need most to sell the most hot dogs right now? He's like, Oh, I need a big sign. I need a interesting, great chefs. And it's like, no, you just need a hungry audience and then you'll sell out. <laughs> That's like, so I saw that you're, I like your, your agency website, man. Uh, H hour, right. Is that what you called it? H hour. Like, I remember it from from the army days. Like, okay, yeah. that's that's when the rub, the rubber uh, hits the road. That's when <laughs> right. you know everything starts to happen. I think I think it's a good uh, name, and just kind of kind of stuck. Um, <laughs> I dig it, man. What um what was your like mo in, in the army? Here we call it an mos. But what was your job in the military? What did you do? Infantry, nice. light infantry. So actually, I'm still in uh, the army reserve. Uh, it's been <laughs> actually 22 years. Uh, Wow. This past June, this past June, currently a company sergeant major. So, um, holy shit! So you you did yeah. the whole the whole <laughs> the whole rodeo. <laughs> well, there's definitely uh, been uh, 
pauses, let's just say, where like I was right. working on like my civilian career or my business where like I didn't do a lot. I wasn't like the most active reservist there is. But, yeah. I uh, kind of stuck on and uh, contributed to where I could um, and uh, took courses when I could to, to get to the next uh, rank level. So I'm, I'm a warrant, warrant officer now and should qualify master warrant officer. So, um, That's awesome. I was a forward observer. Uh, so we basically called artillery and we blew stuff up and mostly yeah. hung out with the infantry guys. And it was, it was another lifetime ago though, man, but definitely, it definitely gets you motivated to do more with your life. I feel like, because you just see, you go through the shit of, of military of like, you, you push yourself to your limits. And then once you get out of the military, it's very different though. It's, it's kind of a, a confusing rodeo, um, mm-hmm. but you still want to push yourself and you still want to see where your, your limits are. And I think that's yeah. kind of why I like marketing. I like building businesses because it's like the next test and it's like, how much can I do? You know? So um, yeah. you think see, military- I cheated and I stayed in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <you did>. me- <laughs> yeah. But um, definitely like I'm, I'm coaching a few veterans right now through uh, some nonprofits here in Canada and uh, in connection with some, uh, you know, foundations and also the veteran affairs canada and uh you know the work ethic does <laughs> just show like there's definitely um you know well, they sometimes. get things <laughs> done attitude sometimes sometimes not like it's, yeah. not everyone's cut out or some people just want to chill and uh you know take their pension out or whatever just to get like a security guard job and just sit there and read books and right they'll be happy with it yeah it's all over, across the board but typically like you know the the people that i've been coaching or mentoring or just interacting with they're like all go-getters they're they leverage their past experience and drive in a new capacity and uh, that's really remarkable so I'm, I'm gonna be launching a uh it's kind of like a service business it's it's a it's a marketing mm-hmm. business like what would what would you do if you were going to start a service business and, and sell online with some google ads you would just like what is what is your process i guess what do you think of when you're going to start a brand new thing with google ads interesting because yesterday uh, someone asked me the exact same question on their podcast um so first of all um it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine but everybody thinks of google ads as just search just you know that's the reason why they used to be called adwords and they actually went to the rebranding to google ads because google ads is not just adwords yeah so uh, inside of google there's you know the search part and then there's also um the display network which is all those those banners that you see when you visit websites and those okay. banners are like i think 93 percent of the internet 94 uh, websites have adsense so it's vast inventory of uh, ad space there right YouTube as well. So all the video stuff that you see there and also um, ads that you see overlays on top of the videos, it's all uh, available through Google Ads. Then there's the shopping network, which is like when you search for stuff, you see those um, you know, tiles or icons with you know a, a physical product and a price. That Those are also Google Ads. And then there's something that's called the discovery network. That's like, you know, stuff you see inside your Gmail inbox and this and that. That's, that's Google Ads ecosystem. So um, now back to your question. If if this is a brand new business that no one heard of, right? Or is no it something this is, that has... this is coming out like this weekend and it's just online services. Okay. So it's going to be, I've got yeah. like a team of VAs that are going to help mm-hmm. me do all the things. And it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. So, yeah. So essentially like, you know, um, normally like if, if it's an existing business, like let's say brick and mortar going online, like the first thing I would advise is just to, to basically bid in your own brand name, right? Because mm-hmm. people who have heard of you, they're going to search for you and, if you're not bidding for your brand and you don't have strong SEO, then uh, they're not going to find you. Or worse, right. your competitors will bid on your brand if they're savvy, and um, they're going to display their ads for your brand and search. Now, if you are the brand new business, like that's the tactic you can start employing: is so find your top competitors and bid on their brand names ethically without trying to pass off as if you were them. You can yeah. say things like, you know, give us a chance to beat their rates, something like that. So so basically trying to find like the highest intent users, the, the hottest traffic, like bottom of the funnel uh, type searchers who right. are searching for your competitors, who are searching for, you know, very targeted like keywords. So, you know, let's say, whatever, if, you, if you're going to be launching a VA service, like, you know, maybe something like VA service is too brief but maybe like you know executive assistant executive virtual assistant to ceo you know you think long tail keywords are the ones you go for after yeah well right? long tail keywords are usually cheaper and right. they're also more uh, higher user intent right so if someone's looking for uh, so va long tail VA, keywords with a buyer intent in a way right is that what you're saying yeah so someone's looking for you know virtual assistants versus somebody's looking for higher virtual assistant now which one do you think is better yeah now <laughs> yeah and the word higher or you know uh, or you know pricing 
and right. stuff like that. So basically, you know, because everybody us- usually wants to go like, for the most obvious keywords, and uh, that's where the most competition is. Uh, and sometimes it's fine. Like I mean, it's whoever owns the term life insurance in Google, yeah, uh, gets a lot of leads. But it's probably Geico who you can't compete with because they got deep pockets. So if you're right. uh, an affiliate or if you're a small business with uh, limited resources, you got to yeah. outwork uh, everyone. You cannot outbid. So uh, that means work uh, thinking smarter and thinking outside the box. You know, figuring out non-obvious keywords people will be looking for so that's that's one way and then uh, right now a lot of people uh, prefer to consume uh, video so i would invest into some video content for youtube ads and then you know throw some money at it uh, and it doesn't mean like they have to be like highly produced uh, videos i mean what's working right now best is those like tiktok style like uh selfie videos and like hey you know i'm, I'm robert lion and uh, this is what i do and you know look this is my customer he's so happy <laughs> why don't you give us a quick testimonial and they're like yeah yeah robert really like blew my mind with his service it's so amazing it changed my life and like that's yeah, kind I'm, of gonna stuff cl- I'm gonna like, clip that right there you're gonna be my <laughs> no, but i mean you, you you can do you can do that to, you know yourself as like the, the mm-hmm. face of the brand and you know get some customers mm-hmm. or you know what we've leveraged for e-commerce brands uh or content creators or influencers so you, you send your product or service or let them try it and then right. just, you know, do you mind recording like a 30 second clip of your impressions? And most people, especially if they're professional content creators, they know how to do content that resonates with their audience. They'll do, they'll do it. Sometimes you may have to pay. Sometimes like, it depends. But um, that's, yeah. that's uh, if, you know, if you are camera shy, which I don't think you are, you can, you can do that. You like d- display ads? Like, what do, you, what do you think bootstrapping Google Google ads? Like, what would, what would be the, like, the cheapest that you would think way to start getting results if you if you were just gonna mm. brand new campaign start thinking about it just curious what your thoughts are on it well it would be along the lines what i already described yeah, so like bit on the competitor's so brand long tail keywords and then youtube ads is kind of what you also said but is that kind of what you're thinking well yeah that's uh definitely you know, because youtube is also essentially a search engine right so right, like if you have high intent uh, searches that people will be you know how to hire a va right and right. you have a useful video that says, you know, I'm Robert and here are five things that I've learned about hiring VA. That's probably not a bad video for you to create. Yeah, I would say, I don't want to say it was going to be the cheapest way because no, you know, Google no, clicks are not word. cheap, but like <laughs> relatively cheap, like as opposed to trying to like compete for mm-hmm. virtual assistant type keywords, like um, I would invest a little bit more time into keyword research. YouTube, I think is still slightly underutilized right now. Like even we aren't running that much YouTube as we should, I think. Yeah. Um, so, so I think it's a little bit less competitive right now. It's a little easier to gain lodgement right. if you have good good content, right? Like if, if your videos are kind of not grabbing the attention, right. then you're gonna have you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah. Well, I'm, um, I'm good at the creative yeah, dis- stuff. So yeah. It'll be interesting. display. Uh, I would use it for retargeting. That depends, of course, like how many touch points you're. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you need to convert uh, someone to a customer, but essentially, it's not a bad idea to have a retargeting campaign that uh, you know somebody interacted with you before and then they see a banner that they uh, get reminded oh yeah, yeah I remember visiting them no, I should give them a try that's so that's a, probably not not a bad idea um, to do retargeting yeah um, is your agency using any uh, like like Hyros or, or Pixel companies that that you like using to make sure you're tracking people we actually like stopped using third-party trackers for google because uh, they actually kind of waged a war on them uh, a few years oh, ago really i think around 2019 they actually it was called uh, parallel tracking so before you used to drop a third-party tracker link into the google ad and then what ends up happening is this redirect right so people click an ad go to the tracker and they go to your offer Mm-hmm. Google didn't like that because it was opening up um, avenues for for abuse. Yeah. So they said no, no more. You only ways from the ad to Google the final like destination. Controls. Nothing, nothing in between. And then there's like they implemented something that's called parallel tracking. Like if you do want to use a third party tracker, you can use it's it in parallel. parallel. But all of a sudden, those trackers, some of them that we were using, they weren't uh, as accurate anymore. So it was almost redundant, and some of them were actually flagged as a malicious software by Google. So we actually lost a couple of ad accounts just for using a tracking. Like, okay, well, that's not good. Yeah. So I just made a decision, like, you know, it's not really giving me any additional uh, insight into like how I can market, at least with the types of products that I was working with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like, you know, I just 
turn them off. And uh, yeah, we, we're not using them right now. What's um what's are some like interesting e-com stuff that you've done that have, have you've seen good results with? Have you done anything like out of the box or anything special that's kind of like gotten some cool results for people? Um, well, that uh, case study that I brought up with the uh, it was a consumer electronic product that we pivoted into a gun care product. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, basically gave, gave us a more runway. Like, you know, it was it was doing okay as a consumer electronic product, but then we just pivoted and adopted a new angle for a new brand new audience, which is, you know, gun owners. Right. That gave us probably another couple of million in revenue that we wouldn't otherwise have had. Um, and cool. exposure to to that, uh, you know, media, traditional media, like guns and ammo magazine. And whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just basically finding new angles for existing products to sell them to a new audience. I think that's like a, a cool uh, strategy that if you can make it work, probably easier than trying to invent a new product for, yeah. for that uh, existing audience, you know. Huh. Do you think your niche is like guns and military e-commerce? Because that sounds like what you what you got going on. I mean, you sold bulletproof plates, guns, you know, like that's that's, that's a badass um, niche you thought about. <laughs> well, um, full disclosure, we didn't sell guns because it's well, not, not guns, allowed. sorry. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> but um, all of the like uh, legal accessories, yeah. But uh, I think it's just kind of naturally gravitated towards that because of you right. know, my military background. Like I used to be a competitive shooter uh, back in the oh, day. Cool. So it's not an easy market to operate in, like Right. To be honest, so um, I don't know. It just it just happened. Like it's not like I was merited or like really like focused on it. Like we tried a wide spectrum of things, and out of the hundreds of products that we tried, like you know there was some success in the outdoors yeah. and sports, uh, like as in like uh, athletics. I guess everything that I kind of have some affinity with, like personally, yeah. maybe it just helps understand the the end customer a little better. Right. Um, well, I'm in Arizona and we love our guns down here. So <laughs> I don't know. There's, the, there's a like, big market. <laughs> they, they just, uh, they just, uh, they banned assault rifles last year and then now they banned handgun imports. So like Canada. Yeah. In Toronto, man, with... what's going on up there? Well, you guys got the bears. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, again, so it, it is challenging. It's an interesting market to be in, but it's also challenging and, uh, mm-hmm. There's uh, you know, pressures on it, obviously, like regulatory and uh, legal. Um, and people are getting deplatformed too. Like, I, you know, you go to Shot Show and you hear some stories of people just getting kicked off, like TikTok or Instagram, or just just because. Right. Right? I've already invested a lot into like learning this industry. So on one hand, like I don't want to forego that investment, but on the yeah. other hand, like it would probably be a lot easier to be in like you know health and beauty or something. Or right. <laughs> you know. No, I sold. Uh... Or they they were they were basically custom leather holders uh, holsters for pistols and guns and things mm-hmm. like that and I sold that for a long time and that was a really cool one but I was honestly just selling it in Facebook Marketplace and that was like my secret marketing tactic and it worked like crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was badass so <laughs> all right on man I've got uh, two questions that I kind of ask everybody that comes on the show um, but what's um before we get into that what do you think would be the best way for our audience to kind of get into your world kind of you know, reach out to you? How do they get in contact with you online? Sure. So there's a few ways and uh, it take a minute, but if you're a veteran uh, who is thinking about uh, entrepreneurship or you're already on the path to, so I've got a free uh, Facebook group uh, called Enlisted to Entrepreneur. Uh, so you, you can look it up and join Enlisted to Entrepreneur on Facebook. Yeah. So the agency website is h-our.agency. Uh, check it out and uh, you can sign up for uh, um, strategy session with me. You can look at some of our past case studies as well. And you know, if you like this episode and you just want to hang out with me personally, just uh, find me by my name, uh, Greg Potapenko, on uh, any social uh, except TikTok. <laughs> so yeah. like Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Um, so everybody that comes on the show, I ask them two questions. And the first one is, you know, what motivates you? What what really gets you kind of fired up? I think it, it changes. Like you know, initially I just wanted you know to have um, you know more financial freedom than it evolved to something else uh, over the years but um, I think right now it's uh, trying to make a difference like trying to make a, something impactful for I guess more people uh, bring them up lift them up um, help uh, others get uh, more successful and uh, another thing is I you know kind of stole from Jocko but I think uh he says in his book, like motivation is fickle, like it will not, you know, carry you over because you know it's a finite resource. So my discipline is what will. And I find that a lot of times it is just, you know, being disciplined. Like, you know, I have to get up and go at it, and even though I don't feel like it. Like that's right. what often uh, gets me moving, especially when things aren't doing great. Like when things are great, it's easy to get fired up and 
It's tough, and yeah, I do fall back a lot on just the, the, the discipline. So basically, the next question is impact. That's like the keyword. So what is like one habit or one discipline like you were just talking about that you, you've been doing a lot that has genuinely had an impact on your life? Like you saw like, hey, if I do this every day or if I start doing this, um, it, it's made an impact on my life. It's going to be a little cheesy, but I think it's uh, working out, exercising and training. I think that's just like a habit that I do, uh, if not daily, then almost every day. Mm-hmm. And um, I do feel bad if I end up skipping a, a training session or a workout. And I think that physical fitness has helped me uh, a lot throughout the years. To you're able to operate longer, you are able to operate at a higher level. You know, you, you don't feel like sleepy or groggy as much, or you know, like low energy type thing. I think that helps. Just you know, be able to you know, grind sometimes when you need to grind. That's just uh, something that I think helped me a lot. Um, and you know, Tony Robbins said the same thing. Like, what's the most impactful thing you can tell somebody to do is like exercise. Right. Well, I know. I, th- I think it, there's a huge correlation to our like quality of life and the way that we take care of our body and things like that. So um, actually, I got one more question for you. Sorry, before your phone dies. But as an agency owner, as what you've been doing, how do you balance the, the, the balance between selling your, your agency, selling your, your product and then also mm-hmm. doing the work? Like, have you found any ways to, that that works for you? So short answer is that because i was a performance marketer slash affiliate for a long time like it kind of took care uh, of a lot of the selling part because you don't have to sell right. really when you're an affiliate because usually companies who get it they have an affiliate program or they're already working with an affiliate network the conversation usually goes like this like hey do you have traffic for x yes send yeah. usually that's <laughs> like literally like the all the selling you have to do sometimes there's like a background check or if you're working direct with like a fortune 500 company there's more yeah. involved but essentially like um that was what i did for years so actually uh, right now when i started to go out there and promote and you know the agency and more like you know, trying to recruit traditional type client relationship i realized that you know i have a bit of a weakness there so I, that's why i started putting out content appearing you know, on different you know stages and whatnot and just uh, going to events again. Um, so yeah, I can't say I've mastered the art of selling, um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, I use the, the affiliate model as a crutch to like avoid selling altogether and just focus on the delivery, like running the campaigns, creating the funnels, optimizing and whatnot. So yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's my my answer. I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that doing affiliate stuff to Google ads is still working nowadays or is it harder now? Like it's gotten a lot harder. Um, you have to have some sort of an edge still like, you know, um, you know maybe a more direct relationship, uh, higher uh, payouts, uh, some more exclusive offers that uh, not a lot of people can jump on because yeah, jumping into red ocean with Google uh, click prices, like we've done some tests and it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't pretty, <laughs> but whenever, whenever we had some sort of an edge, like a direct relationship, higher payouts or uh, something that was uh, hard to overcome for competitors, like usually that produced good results. Yeah, so you got to have an edge. You, you can be, you know, you can be super creative and create your own like super creative ad funnel or whatever, but then it will get copied pretty quickly if it's a non-exclusive offer. So it has to be some sort of tactical advantage uh, to, to make it a success in my opinion. Nice. Well, right on, man. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. I had a lot of fun talking mm-hmm. to you, picking your brain. I definitely learned a lot. <laughs> I think everybody else listening out there did too. Uh, do you have any last thoughts before we kind of wrap up? Well, you know, I guess I uh, just want to end on, again, somewhat of a cheesy note, but like, uh, you know, if you're just on the fence thinking about it or hesitating, uh, you know, I would repeat the words of uh, my company commander on my last uh, course that I've done, which basically said, <laughs> You can do it. As he sent us into the fields for two weeks with no sleep. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you can do it and don't quit. And uh, one, one step at a time, uh, you, you know, if, if you don't quit, you will win. Right. Determination and just sheer force. You'll get there for sure. <laughs> or it'll be smarter than everybody and just still, you can do it. <laughs> That's right. All right, man. Well, well I appreciate yeah, your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, leave me some comments. Hit the subscribe. Definitely go check out uh, hour.com. We'll have all the links in the show notes below and have a great day. Appreciate you. Bye.